Yeah. Are you going to say a few words? Uh, okay. Just real quick. Uh, I'll get everybody's attention. Yeah. All right. Uh, about that time. Uh, third book of Jonah. So go ahead and get your Bibles ready to the third book of Jonah. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, he said he didn't have time for Hebrews chapter 11. That's going to be primarily the lesson next week. So, yeah, so we're going to get picked right back up uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, so with that, um, uh, don't forget all the announcements we made. Uh, all the stuff that was made this morning uh, is posted on the back. So with that, uh, Raymond, would you mind doing the closing word of prayer? So Raymond's going to do the closing word with that, Jeff. Let's talk about Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. You know, as I was preparing this lesson, I thought, this is a short chapter. I don't know what is going to keep us entertained for 30 minutes. And then I really started reading it. And there's a lot here. So let's, let's go through it. Jonah chapter 3. Uh, let's start off just by reading. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is very interesting. Let's start. Um, let's start at the beginning. So Jonah... The Lord came to Jonah a second time, telling him to go to Nineveh. And what does Jonah decide to do? He went. We're going to come back to this, but it's interesting. God came to Jonah a second time, and Jonah obeyed. And what did he do? What, what did God tell him to do? And what did Jonah do? I've left off verse numbers on my little printout, so I can't tell you which verse. It's here, up near the top. God told him, call out against the city of Nineveh, call out against it, the message that I tell you. And Jonah arose, he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. God had in mind what he was going to do to this city, 
Now, was Nineveh just a little teeny tiny city? No, you're shaking your head. What was Nineveh? That's kind of big. But this was by walking. Like, they didn't have cars back then, so. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. And how, I thought this was interesting. How far does Jonah go before you start seeing some action from the Ninevites? The first day. It didn't take long. That's very interesting to me. These were not Israelites, right? These were not people of God. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. These were some crazy people, very violent. They were very wicked. And yet, when a little prophet comes, within the first day preaching doom upon this city from the Lord, things start moving inside the city. Yeah. Now, while the people of Nineveh were alive, had they already heard the reputation of God? I would assume so because they didn't, the king did not say, hey, I just heard about a new God and he's going to destroy us. It seems that way. Mm, yeah. There's, I think he feels stupid, but for a different reason. When we get to chapter 4, we're going to see that Jonah had a pretty good idea they would turn, and he didn't want that. Jonah knew God is a merciful God. And if the Ninevites knew about this, they're going to they're gonna be saved. God is, God is merciful, right? So it shows some attitude on Jonah's part. But I did. I thought this was very interesting. It takes three days to walk across this city, and within the first day, Jonah is preaching doom and gloom. Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So if you do the math, it takes three days to go across the city. By the time Jonah reaches the end, they only have 30... Seven days to repent? But it didn't take that long. Within the first day, this was buzzing all around the city. How far did the message go? How many people did it reach? Yeah. Man, news travels fast. You do not need an iPhone. <laughs> right? Just word of mouth, in the first day, this message has reached, it says, uh, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Everybody knew in the first day. And not just the peasants, it reached the king. And what did the king do? Did he think, oh, this is just some crazy guy from who knows where? Yeah. Now, how often, like we talked about earlier, the guys with the sandwich boards, ah, oh, 40 days and Nineveh is going to be destroyed. How often does a king listen to people like that? With the president of the United States, look at somebody with a sandwich board that says, ah, oh, America is going to be destroyed in a month. Would we take that seriously? No. He would end up on the internet for very different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the king here in Nineveh heard this message and he acted quickly. I have a list of things, a list of actions that he took. He arose from his throne. He removed his robe. He covered himself with sackcloth. He sat in ashes. He issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh. So not only was the king concerned about himself, but he was concerned about his kingdom. Tell everybody. He was not leaving this up to chance. And what were the people to do? What was the king's concern? The king was worried they were all going to be smitten. And not in love, they were going to be smoked. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Now we don't know how long, it doesn't give how many days, but that's big to tell your entire city, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, to tell them nobody eat or drink. And what was the hope? What was the king hoping to achieve by fasting? Yeah, that God would notice, that God would take note. And not just was the king telling them everybody fast. He goes on to say, cover yourself with sackcloth, call out mightily to God, and let everyone turn from his evil way. He was serious. The king was not leaving this up to chance. He was serious. Everybody turn from your evil way, from the violence that is in his hands. Wow. And the whole city, presumably the whole city did it because God saw it. God took note. Now, yeah. Keep in mind what sackcloth was. It was a very easy type of material anyhow. So it was not very common. This was not Calvin Klein, right? This was, yeah. It showed it was an outward sign of. I am not comfortable, right? My inward being is repenting. I am, I am recognizing my failures, my shortcomings, and I am repenting. I am turning the way that I should go. Did the king have any guarantee that God would see them and relent? You're shaking your head. No. The king didn't know. But he hoped. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's a good point. So... Different from, like, uh, Abraham when the angels came and said, we are going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, well, hold on. My family lives there. Maybe if we find a couple of righteous people, can you just not? He bargained with God. Maybe we can work out a deal. The king of Nineveh didn't play around. No time for negotiation. Everybody put on your sackcloth and turn from your evil ways. And what was God's response? Mm -hmm. 
Wait, I heard something. He listened. Yeah. He noticed. And God turned from the disaster that he had planned for Nineveh. Now, the next chapter is going to get into how Jonah felt about all of this. But the spoiler is he wasn't very happy. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And it, it kind of leads credence to again why Jonah specifically would not have wanted these people to be redeemed. Yes. He thought they were horrible. Mm -hmm. And and granted, it was very <coughs> harsh on Jonah and for his behavior, because he had sign about it. But yet we in this nation, there are people just because they're on the opposite side of the political aisle. We don't want to see them on the same continent. Yes. <laughs> you know, my, I was yelled at by my professor of Islamic ethics. Uh, the whole class was yelled at. They were like, you don't want to, you know, where you're at, you don't belong here. Oh, you don't boy. belong in this nation. You need to leave. Oh, boy. So there was, there was not even a, a dividing eye on like, hey. No. Let's yeah. go back over and let's unify. They were obliterated. Yes. No, that's good. Yes. Yes, that it touches on a lot of things. Yes, comment real quick. Um, um, Ezra 7 says that God is the God of the history, which is ruthless, merciless, and completely destroyed Babylon and Moab after God's wrath. But here we see that Nineveh was an offense to. Lunted after they repented. Yeah. And there, when Abraham uh, says to God to not destroy God in the world with a few righteous people, that it, there might have not even been a single righteous person in Nineveh, but because they were willing to repent, God yeah. sent Jonah and they repented. 
That's an interesting point. And it goes back to, I feel this is such a cool connection. This chapter starts with God giving a second chance to who? To Jonah. What's that? Yes. Yes. He didn't, it didn't click with Jonah. Yeah. Yes, and that's huge. And Jesus takes that a step further, right? How often should I forgive someone who sins against me? How many times in a day? Right? And what's Jesus' answer? That's a lot. That's a lot. And this is a demonstration. Right? This is just a small sampling, a demonstration of a people who are not known to be God's people, but God still cares about them. Enough to send one of his prophets to give them a chance at repenting. That shows me a lot of things, that God cares about the whole world. Right? God wants... God desires all men everywhere to be saved. Not just the people that we like. Oh man, that's hard. Because I can think of some really evil people. And if they were to get on TV and say, oh, I repent, I would be skeptical. That's just my nature. I really would be skeptical. But these people showed it. The king of Nineveh sent out this proclamation. The whole city obeyed, and God turns and relents from the disaster he had planned. Um, those are the main points that I have for this chapter. It is a quarter after. Do you guys see anything else? In Jonah chapter 3, before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, I think this was Jonah as a whole was trying to tell God to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, God gave Jonah his like, chance after chance like, to, and God saves Jonah. And God tries to save someone else. Jonah doesn't want that. Yeah. And it's kind of. No one gets special treatment here mm. with God. Um, and you kind of just need to check in your own heart on it. And yeah. Um, no, everyone deserves to be saved. It's not just me. And um, yeah, I've been saved before too. So I'm not just this great perfect that can stand God against God saying, actually, I don't think I was perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, this this story of, of repentance and deceit is also the sound of uh, Jesus. Uh, when he talks about when he has his time, uh, he says, and Matthew chapter 12, the son of man is prepared for the day of the Lord. He wants it to be a sign for the earth. Mm -hmm.
And so, oh. yeah. Several, yeah. Message, several messages in this. One, um, we, we think of the, the, the dispensations, for example, the patriarchal dispensation, and then you have the Mosaic dispensation, and then you have the Christian, Christian dispensation. And you only read about a narrow window. Mm. So, Was a priest of God Most High, Absolutely. right? And then here we are in this particular instance of Jonah and Mosaic dispensation, but you also have those of Nineveh. Mm. I think from the reading of this, from from my interpretation, that these people who truly repented uh, to God, that they were not only spared uh, destruction at that moment, but we can see that they're also those. Of It's kind of bigger. And, and all the people on the earth now in this dispensation, there is no other left, right? There's, there's only one left who is left. And so, you know, and that parallel there, because of the fact other things that were mentioned, absolutely, God has taken care of the whole world. Yeah. Uh, under the, the Old Testament. And he's still taking care of the whole world in the New Testament, but through his son is the only way that he yeah. Well, that was the mission, right? The mission that was given to the apostles was to take the good news, to take the gospel, spread it to the whole world. Mm -hmm. This isn't just for us. It's not just for Americans or Europeans or like whatever. Yeah. No, it's for everybody. No, it's for everybody. And we've seen, uh, man, I wish I could remember the reference, the ones that talk about uh, before the earth began, God had this plan, and the plan was to unite everything under Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And, and again, the, the final thing about this, we think about the wickedness, the violence, the evil of America, and yet they were forgiven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so then again, it, it leads me to think today that people <laughs> will not accept Christ. You know, no matter how they view themselves, whether they do view themselves as honorable or not, or good people or bad, if they refuse to Christ, they are more wicked than the people of Nineveh. Yeah. You know, it is an interesting point, and I've known, I've known people who grow up uh, like they live their whole lives kind of with this idea of uh, they need to earn God's graces, right? I mean, I've struggled with that. Uh, I've known other people who struggle with that to a great degree. And whatever they said, maybe they said like a mean thing to somebody once, right? But it was really mean. And they have in their head, I can never make that right, 
right? It was so bad, whatever it was, I can never make that right. And I've seen these people on their deathbed being told about God's grace. And I love it. I love your point. The Ninevites are an excellent example. They were mm, evil, evil people, evil, violent people. And God saved them because they repented, because they trusted in God's message, and they changed. God can save anybody. Everybody, that's his desire. Not everybody will choose it. But God can. He has the ability and the willingness, and he has made the way open for everybody. We just have to choose. Uh, oh, I love that. That's a very good one. Anything else before we wrap up? The next chapter is... Uh, very, very cool and weird. It ends unlike any other book in the Bible, and I'm looking forward to going through that. Jonah chapter 4 is what we're going to talk about next month. So read it. Maybe read the whole Jonah. It's only four chapters. It's really short. Get the bigger context. So when I come back, Lord willing, next month, we can talk about Jonah chapter Thank you for letting me be here. And I'm looking forward to the one day meeting in July. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous heavenly Father, once again, we thank thee for the opportunity to assemble and study a portion of thy holy word. Pray that we can take it into our daily lives and apply it to our daily lives. Being examples that will set before other people, they may see the light. Heavenly Father, pray once again for those mentioned here that are sick and unable to be with us. Pray that if it be thy will, you will return a portion of their health to them that they may return with us. Go with us, Heavenly Father, as we depart here today. Go with us into our homes and our daily lives. Keep us safe and return us safely and once again here at our next appointed time. We pray forgive us of our sins and thy holy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs>